to uh, uh, what we would know as uh, Broward Boulevard along uh, that area. Now, uh, for the most part, they're uh, hit and miss areas, not exactly what you would say a massive uh, area. There might be a five or six block area without power, then another five or six block area with power, so it's almost at intervals. Uh, we have spoken with some uh, Florida power and light officials, and uh, they're basically telling us when, when they have a lot of transformers go or when they have a lot of power lines go down, the way they're going to deal with it is they're just going to go ahead and let that entire area shut off. Um, unless there's a real emergency, they're not going to be sending crews in there with these, uh, with these winds that we're going to be experiencing now to, uh, to try and uh, put the telephone poles or the uh, electric poles back up or fix the transformers. They'll do it after the hurricane is gone, and that would be uh, sometime tomorrow around... Uh, around probably four o'clock or five o'clock. Is it the winds that, is, that are causing these transformer explosions, do you think? What is causing it? I, it's obviously from the hurricane, but what part of the hurricane is causing these things to happen? You know, we, uh, we experienced uh, a couple of these. We got to see firsthand uh, a little while ago when we uh, were driving down here. Actually, it's not a little while ago anymore. About two or three hours ago, we actually saw them blow. Uh, it seemed to us at the time the only possible explanation for it could have been the wind, because there was nothing else happening at the time other than the wind. So, hours ago. We also have a report of a large fire at Northeast 172nd and Biscayne Boulevard. And I think this would be part of the evacuation area, actually. Don't know what building this is. Well, apparently it was a building where boats were being built. Some sort of a boat building. Don't know what it is. Uh, might have been... Uh, a marina? I'm not sure. Northeast 172nd and Biscayne Boulevard, apparently a large fire, and uh, apparently uh, the fire department is not going to be responding to this uh, at this time, so uh, if there's a fire, it's probably going to have to burn itself out. We've just been told it's Mako Marina, where that uh, fire that you're uh, speaking of was. Just recognizing some of those pictures that Ralph just showed us, uh, Ralph took, uh, Ralph Raymond we refer to. Uh, that's the area right behind, not far from Channel 7 actually, that's around 163rd and uh, Collins Avenue where uh, some of these pictures are taken. And uh, and again, you know, you really don't get the full brunt of the hurricane or the full brunt even of the storm in these pictures. These the pictures... Bridge going over to Holliver. These right pictures, here. you look at them right now, they don't look any different than a thunderstorm in South Florida on any particular day. I mean, there's nothing extremely dramatic about uh, these pictures. Uh, uh, an overturned tree in South Florida is not a revelation, as a matter of fact. Jillian Ware has been following uh, the situation for us for a while now. You know, you can't help but wonder, uh, Jillian, if the folks in the Keys, who we were always so concerned about, actually, uh, because of the position of the hurricane, the way it's coming in, far down at Key West, they've kind of lucked out, haven't they? They certainly have, and when you consider that on the southern south side of the eye, it's one of the weaker areas, if you can call a, a, any area a weak area within a hurricane. Rick, you're probably right in your assessment, because again, as Michael was mentioning when he was uh, reporting from the NASA area, and he was saying, you know, it was incredibly somber, you would expect something a little more dramatic.